Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time it is a review of the 1991 unheralded horror film Body Parts. This is one of those movies that I really enjoyed right from the get-go. First saw this on VHS years ago because I was intrigued by the overall concept and I was a really big fan of Jeff Fahey. And I still am a really big fan of Jeff Fahey. And I was like, oh, Jeff Fahey's in it and it's a bigger role for him. I definitely want to give this a look. So I did, and I'm really glad that I checked it out one one night uh, quite a few years ago because it quickly became one of my favorites. And after a most recent viewing this movie, I realized how much I truly and genuinely love this movie. Body Parts is one of those movies, in my opinion, that all the parts work. It has all parts clicking and firing on all cylinders it is a fine absolutely amazing spectacular piece of horror thriller filmmaking like this is one of those movies that it's right up there and like my top 50 of my all-time favorite horror films it's one of my favorite films from the 1990s it's my favorite film that stars Jeff Fahey because it features my favorite performance by him as Bill Cruikshank, uh, and also, I would say, his finest acting performance. Uh, this is just a tour de force in so many different terrific, wonderful ways. It's one of those movies that I recommend to everybody. I recommend it even to people who aren't even necessarily fans of the genre because it's not a straightforward gore fest or a traditional horror movie it definitely has uh, a thriller aspect going to it in terms of the script and the story and if you're a horror fan it has a lot of that too I mean it's bloody as hell like it's really got some great bits of gore and great bits of intense action and thrills it's one of those movies that is one of a kind it has so many different elements that really do work phenomenally well and yeah I, I can't recommend it enough go see it stream it buy it on DVD uh, it's one of those movies that definitely deserves to be seen by as many eyes as humanly possible now the film is directed by Eric Red and it, this is a dynamite just absolutely amazing and awesome job by Eric Red he does a really effective... Effective is, is putting it lightly. He does a really stellar job working with his cast and with his crew and handling all the sequences. There's a lot of nice uh, bits of camera movement here and there as well as the use of different uh, forms of lighting and things like that to create the right mood and atmosphere. It's got a kind of gritty look to it at times, but it does fit the film really well because it's a film that's, as it goes on and as Bill starts to really deteriorate mentally, the it seems like the film itself just gets seedier and grimier, which is just a really uh, nice way to continue to show this... Uh, De not, not, not necessarily de-evolution, but this new evolution of this character, which is into a more darker character to, to really show more of his dark side. The cinematography and the direction kind of reminded me of Romero's uh, take on the dark half in terms of the, the way that a lot of the sequences were shot. And that's a good thing because that's another really good movie. It's has a screenplay by Eric Redd and Norman Snyder and it's actually loosely based on a book called Choice Cuts. Now the script it is a really wonderful surprisingly witty at times screenplay. Uh, it's not a comedy but there are some nice bits of levity here and there and it's one of those movies that I think just has a really great vibe to it and the story really does suit everything really well. 
It mixes the tone together perfectly. There really aren't any moments in it where I felt the tone was off kilter or wasn't working. And it does a really nice job with its characters, makes them all likable and relatable despite some of their issues, gives them a lot of juicy lines of dialogue to work with, and there are a lot of really effective twists and turns in the screenplay that I'm not going to give away to people who haven't seen the movie. But when you see the film, you see that firsthand. You see how really ingenious this film is. I really love the main concept. It plays around with the idea of where evil lives. Does evil live in the mind or does it live in the flesh? I love that this film deals with that. It's a, in a lot of ways, it's a modern day update of Frankenstein, like a 90, early 90s Frankenstein with a completely different approach than a lot of the other Frankenstein updates had. So the main gist of the plot, I'm just going to quickly just talk about it real fast is you have Bill Cruikshank played by Jeff Fahey. He's a psychologist who goes to prisons and stuff like that to uh, pick the mind, so to speak, of these prisoners. And he ends up getting in this horrific car accident. And this car accident is one of the most intense that I've seen on film. It's all done practically. It's, there's just really spectacular stunt work in this sequence and apparently in the original cut it was like even more violent like Jeff Fahey is looking at his severed arm before he passes out uh and yeah that probably would have added even more impact to the film but at the same time it might have made things a little bit might have made things a little bit too over the top in terms of the gruesomeness I think the way that the sequence is in the final film is really effective and I really wouldn't want to change it that much it leaves it up to your imagination what happened to him and I think that's ultimately more horrific because your mind can create things and scenarios that even the best screenwriters cannot create and yeah just an absolutely just horrific car accident he loses his arm and he ends up becoming a donor for this new revolutionary form of body transplant. So what he gets is he gets an arm transplant. He gets this arm transplanted from the body of a convicted killer. Now, he doesn't find this out until much later, but now he's starting to wonder what's going on because there are times where he can't control his arm and it's doing its own thing he decides to go out on his own and do some investigation do some investigative work and he finds the other patients the other individuals that received parts from this uh killer's body and they're also experiencing similar symptoms they're having the same uh, kinds of nightmares, and they're also having involuntary actions by their limbs. And as the film goes on, there's a poli the police get involved. Uh, Zach, Zach Smokai, who was in uh, Servant in the Rainbow, he plays a Detective Sawchuck in this. Really nice uh, change of pace role for him. He's not, a he's not a villain, he's not a bad guy, he's not a voodoo doctor. Uh, or anything like that. He's, he's a normal, everyday policeman. And you have the dynamic, you have the drama that's going on with uh, Jeff Fahey and his wife, Karen, as well as his kids, where he's losing control of his body because his arm is making him do things like hit his kid and so on and so forth. So that drives him away from his family and what really starts to kick things into high gear is the other individuals that had the body parts, they start getting picked off one by one, and then it's all a mystery and a 
hunt essentially to find who it is before it's too late. So there's even a really cool sequence near the end where the killer shows up and he out of nowhere and in a car right alongside the police cruiser that Jeff Fahey is in and he just puts some handcuffs on his on his hand and then they go they have this car chase uh, through the streets. It's short, but it's really sweet because of just the whole idea of he's, he's, he's handcuffed and he's having to drive and get away from this guy and his, he could lose his hand or lose his arm again if, if things don't turn out too well. Uh, so it's one of those things that there, it builds tension remarkably, remarkably well in that particular sequence. It's a very thrilling sequence and the climax is very crowd pleasing and bloody uh, yeah, it's one of those movies that it definitely, it definitely lives up to the R rating. It's full of blood. It's got r blood squibs and severed limbs and everything. And it goes by at a really rollicking fast pace. It's only 88 minutes and it's a total breeze. There's never a dull moment. And, on, and it's not just all these other things that work so well. I mean, all these other parts. I mean, you, you have the direction that's that's really good. It's not really good. It's great. You have great direction. You have great writing. And then you have a really stellar and spectacular score. This is, The score by Loic Dicker is one of the most underrated scores I can think of. It's weird, it's surreal, but it fits the film perfectly, and it is a really unique score. And it's perfect for a, a fairly unique movie. So, I, sadly, Loic Dicker did not do much of anything after this. And it's really too bad. Like, he did a few things here and there, but, like, his career never took off. And if you listen to this music, you're like, damn, what a missed opportunity. Because this music is just so unique, so haunting, so powerful and memorable. It, it is a really great score. And the cinematography by Theo uh, Van de Sand is also quite good. And, of course, you have the cast. I mean, really good performances by everybody involved. Jeff Fahey delivers a standout performance as Bill Cruikshank. Just had so many different layers. He did a really nice job playing Bill before he got the transplant, as well as Bill after, who is dealing with all these different emotions and dealing with potentially the loss of his family and the loss of his own sanity. Brad Dourif is in a cameo role, and he's awesome. He's just as great as he always has been in pretty much anything as Remo Lacey. Kim Delaney, she doesn't have a whole lot to do, but she's effective here and solid as Karen. Zach Mokai shows that he can do different types of roles and, and does a good job playing a serious straight cop. Lindsay Duncan really ramps up the cold ice persona here as Dr. Ag Agatha Webb and is very chilling in this role. And even the actor who plays Charlie F Fletcher, John Walsh, I thought he was also really good. Um, so the, all these other actors and actresses, they, they all deliver really fine standout performances i'm reusing a lot of the same words because it honestly fits like this film just has so many things that work so well that it is it really is awesome it really is amazing the practical effects the practical makeup effects they're also marvelous uh they look real when people get shot it, you definitely feel it because it's got that gravitas to it that a lot of modern films don't have because you don't get the blood squibs you get cgi but this is all done practically and it's definitely an intense movie like that's a good way to put it it's a very intense film and that's to its benefit 
but the intensity never gets to the point where it's too much. It's the type of intense that's still entertaining and it's still fun to watch. Just like a really well-crafted and well put together thrill ride. You know, like a roller coaster. It's one of those type of movies where it's got all these different twists and turns and everything. It goes by at a really quick pace and it's jam-packed with all kinds of intensity and thrills, but it doesn't lose steam. At the same time, it doesn't get tire tiresome and it doesn't feel like it's too much of a trying to think of the right word. It's not, it's, too, it's not too much of a strain on you, which I think some movies can be a little bit too intense and that intensity isn't handled as well. So it deadens throughout the running time. That's not what happens with this film. It knows when to have some moments of levity and it knows when to pull back the reins a little, just, just like it knows when to just go balls out. Sadly, the film didn't really do that much in the in the theater. It had a budget of ten million. It only made nine million. It had a little bit of a controversy upon its release. Uh, Paramount pulled ads for body parts in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, after they found dismembered bodies in Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. I don't know why they did that because it's not like this has anything to do with Jeffrey Dahmer. But I guess they just thought body parts. And they thought it was insensitive. Okay, all right. But yeah, the movie just it did it did not it did not do very well, sadly. Critical the critic uh the critical thoughts, a lot of the reviews weren't really that promising either. Like apparently Janet Maslin called it an intriguing sleeper, but said it made them made the mistake of opting for grisly horror effects with a less literal minded approach would be more compelling. So essentially what she's saying is the gore didn't work and it should have just been uh, less gory and had more of a literal minded approach. I, I respectfully disagree with that. The fact that it is gory is one of the things that helps it stand out because it adds to its effectiveness and its intensity. I don't necessarily agree either with Variety's review where they say it could have been a reasonably interesting thriller. It talks about how it goes to pieces in the last third and talks about how its brain is missing. First off, this is a horror film. It's it's not based on a true story. So the fact that there are some unrealistic moments in it don't bother they do not bother me at all. I can suspend my disbelief, and I'm easily able to do that because I'm very engaged with the characters and the story. So it's one of those movies where, yeah, you have to turn your brain off a little bit, but that's how most movies are. You're not supposed to analyze films, especially films that are based on the opposite of reality. You're not supposed to look at them and judge them based on whether or not they're realistic or not. That's always been a pet peeve of mine when it comes to criticisms. But yeah, it seems like a lot of people just gave it a lot of bad reviews. I respectfully disagree with those reviews. I think this film is a really great movie. So, um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about Body Parts. It's one of those films that, yeah, it's not that long of a review, but it's a very straightforward film. It, do, it, it really handles its pre premise with a very deft and powerful and confident hand. It's got all the working parts that you want out of a film working over time and just delivering above and beyond what a, uh, a film can offer. It, it's just one of those movies that every time I see it, it just gets better and better. And yeah, the fact that it's so forgotten, it's fallen so far under, the, you know, between the cracks, that makes me love it even more. So yeah, I, I really do hope that it does get a Blu-ray release in the near future. It deserves it. It deserves a 2K, 4K transfer with a commentary with Eric Red, with interviews with some of the cast and crew. Deserves a collector's edition from Screen Factory, Arrow Video, 
or some other company. It deserves that treatment because it deserves way better than some out of print Paramount release. The, I was I, I got lucky enough and got the this overseas uh, release from Australia, which is just a copy of the Paramount release, but for a good price. But other than that, it's like if you if you don't find something like this for an affordable price, you're gonna end up paying an arm and a leg for the Paramount DVD, and this film deserves so much better than that, especially for a growing collector's base. I think this film will easily get rediscovered if it gets a collector's edition release on Blu-ray. You're going to have the same collectors of horror films jump at this movie. And also the fans of the film jump at the chance to own it in HD. And on that regard, I want to mention something that I did hear about a potential Blu-ray release fairly recently. A fan of the film who is friends with Eric Red on Facebook asked him about the Blu-ray. And he actually replied to this to this uh, fan fairly recently, like a couple weeks ago, and told him, that's the plan. Like, uh, he was mentioning how hopefully it'll be announced very soon. So maybe the ball is getting rolling. Uh, the, ball, the ball has started to roll, and maybe Body Parts is finally going to make its way on Blu-ray. I'm not going to get my hopes up just yet because it's just a Facebook exchange. So until I actually see some official paperwork or some official news, I'm not going to really get all pumped up for it. But that being said, I'm still I, I, I think there's a good chance because I don't think Eric Red would be saying things like that if something wasn't in the works. So that's really awesome, and I'm really hoping that it does get released. One thing I wanted to mention real quick about the story before I go is it's also one of those horror films that has a happy ending. And that's another reason that makes it so rewatchable. And another thing that makes it stand out from a lot of film, other films of its genre. Uh, it doesn't have a stupid twist ending. doesn't have any sequel bait, sequel bait bullshit. It ends on a good note and it, it's one of those films where it just it's a really satisfying ending and it's didn't really need to be darker or anything like that because it works really well with what the uh, rest of the film was building up to uh, it's nice to see a redemption arc it's nice to see good triumph over evil for once in a horror movie you can have an effective horror film and still have good triumph over evil. Body Parts is a prime example of that. You can have an effective horror film that can be scary and intense, and also a crowd pleaser, but also be thought provoking in a lot of different ways. It's one of those movies that has so many different layers to it that I definitely feel that it will continue to hold up for many many years to come so yeah thank you for watching my review of body parts i don't really know what else to say about the film except if i were to review it out of five stars i would give it five out of five stars two thumbs up my highest recommendation uh i, I really can't get enough of this movie it's one of those films that the more i talk about it the more i, I just want to watch it again so yeah um Anyway, once again, thanks for watching my, my review, and as always, I will see you later. See ya.